To start a new design in my Layout and Cascade tool, I always start by pressing the Refresh button. This time, we're going to start by opening an example. This gives us a complex design that we'll add some features to, and we'll explore some features of the Layout and Cascade tool. So, first I'm going to do is Auto Scale. I'm going to turn off some of the plots that we're not going to use right now. And the next thing I'm going to do is drop down probes because placing probes is important because the next step is I want to build walls around this so we can emulate the housing that we might have if this were also placed in an enclosure. So to do that, first thing I'm going to do is look for probe. Uh, this is a lower frequency system. Uh, it's actually an X-band radar. So I'm going to place down my probes at each of my ports. Press R to rotate, Control C, Control V to copy, uh, even on a Mac, because the web browser is actually just looking at the keystroke commands. I'm going to press Control C and Control V. I'm going to give myself a reference for my PLLs. Control C, Control V again, rotate. All right, I've placed all my probes. Now that I've placed all my probes, I'm going to point out two things. First, I have a digital step attenuator right here. The digital step attenuator needs a control board because it needs power and it needs uh, SPI signals, serial signals. Same thing goes for my switch. It needs a control board because it needs power and it needs parallel signals in order to control the switch. So the first thing I'm going to do is add control. Let's go ahead and add control boards to the bottom of each of my active components. The next thing this is gonna, I'm going to do is connect all of my RF launches because right now these are all just individual independent blocks. So when I press add GSG, it's going to add all of the ground signal ground jumpers and anchors to each of my connections. And the last step that I can do in an automated fashion is add walls. This will automatically add walls to my entire diagram and the wall algorithm will prioritize the largest possible wall pieces so that you have a more efficient uh, use of the wall pieces. Now the last step that I will have to do by hand is drop down a housing and grab my lid pieces. So I'll type in lid. You'll notice that I have LS1, uh, 0204, 0304, 0404, 0804, and then we have a special lid piece called the LT10204, which is two overlapping sides. So the rest of these all have one side that goes under and the other side goes over. So I'll start with my largest lid piece. I can grab lids and I can place them across my diagram. I'm going to use Control C, Control V to place lid pieces. I'll drag it over here. This is the part that goes above my walls. This is the part that's the underhanging piece that will mate to another lid. The purpose of that LT1 piece is, I'll come over here and type in LT1, is that it is the end cap for overlapping wall pieces. And we found that you can create pretty much any uh, arbitrary shaped housing between these wall pieces and this limited set of lid pieces to cover any design. So we'll go ahead and keep working. Maybe I can fast forward when I play back the video so that this will happen pretty quickly. But control C, control V, and I can move through each of these lead pieces very rapidly. Now we've placed a number of additional lead pieces. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at at this point. So I can go open up my layers. And I'll just hide everything except for the lids so that you can see those lid pieces. Now I can take a lid piece and I can control C and control V and I can press R to rotate and we can continue building as we go. So I'm going to turn these pieces back on and I'll just turn the walls on so that I can see where my lids need to go. Control C, control V. And I just keep placing these pieces until I've filled up my entire diagram. Now, after I get towards the end of my run, 
I'm going to need to start adding some smaller pieces so that I can fill in the remaining gaps. So this right here is a great spot for this LT1. So I'll go ahead and drop it down. Fits perfectly. It covers these walls, it covers the overlap, and it meets side by side with these uh, other wall pieces. Now, occasionally, I may need to insert a shield piece if I need to make my cavity smaller. So for that, I'll come over here and grab my housing, I'll type in shield. I can rotate a shield. You'll notice that these two tabs right here make contact with the sidewall. This piece over the top makes contact with the top wall. Now, I do not actually use these screw holes unless it's a joint where there is no anchor. In actuality, I will use a pair of pliers and just break these off, and I will clamp the shield in between two anchors. Here, I'll just go ahead and rotate, and you'll notice I'm rotating such that these tabs make contact with the wall, and I'll drop this in. So now I've created a cavity shield in this cavity here. In order to finalize my lids, what I like to do is come over here and grab some different lid pieces. So I'll grab my 0204, I'll grab my 304, I'll grab my 404, and I'll grab an LT1. LT1, and I'll just place them down here. And then rather than actually using these, I'll just copy and paste off of them in order to create use a new piece. So Control C, Control V, grab this piece, drop it in, and it's a little bit too large, so I'll grab the smaller one, a three wide, and then I'll grab an LT1, and I'll finish up that string. Okay, you'll notice that the edge of the wall does overlap the probe here and gives me a nice seal. Each of these walls also has a piece of spira in between, so they make a contiguous connection. I will come over here and grab this piece now. And I need something just a little bigger, so I'll use a 3, I'll use a 2, and then I'll use an LT1. That part's complete. Now we'll come up here. I uh, may be able to get away with one of the larger pieces, so I'll uh, click it, Control c Control v I'll do a double rotate. We'll place it. And now I have enough space in here uh, for a normal sized O2 piece. So I'll copy and paste that. Rotate three times and place it in. Okay. Now I just have this little bit left of work to do over here. Go back and auto scale. So I'm going to drop down a large wall, drop down a three, a two, and then drop down my LT1. Okay. And because I can look at these and tell that these other two are the same size, I'll just hold down shift, select multiple pieces, Control C. I'm going to click down here and then click Control V and it will paste in that location. Uh, shift to select multiple and then drag them and drop them. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. Control C. Click down here. Control V. This time I'll show that I can select all by drawing boxes around them and then I'll move them to that final location. Now I'm finished. I'll select all of my wall pieces, I'll delete them. I can now turn my drop-ins back on, turn on my plate, turn on my control boards. Uh, I can't remember if I've added the control boards yet, so we'll just double check by looking. Yep, they're under there. I could have also turned on and off layers to verify that. But looks pretty good now. So now I've built an entire assembly with walls and lids, and I'm ready to go. Now I can also click bomb, and I can see a full list of all of the pieces included. Uh, so this is a $14,000 assembly, uh, which is 
great way to reduce risk when I'm building a full system because it would cost much more for me to cut custom metal and then find out that I have cavity effects that are introducing a, a challenge that would I would need to introduce more parts or use different parts because of some resonance or something. So here's your introduction to the X-Microwave system using walls and lids. To learn more, visit xmicrowave.com to see our latest videos or browse our product library.